Welcome back. Well, as you can see, I'm at the boat again. Uh, I have a few little chores I have to take care of, but my plan is to get out and do some sailing now. It's uh, it's still April, uh, April, uh, middle of April. So, as far as uh, chores, I had to modify my eco stove fan so it would fit on top of the stove. I've done that. I'm going to install that. Uh, I have a 12 volt outlet in the bathroom uh, and I need to install a 12 volt splitter so that I can run the fan for the composting toilet at the same time I run a fan for the uh, exhaust in the ceiling. So I have two fans actually in the bathroom. Uh, I also have a drinking water leak in one of the hoses. Uh, I have to find out exactly where that is. I, I kind of know it's in the engine room somewhere where a hose goes through there. Uh, so I got to find that, fix it. Then I have to flush out the whole water system. That's not been done. I still have the RV antifreeze in there. So that has to be done. Uh, then I have to commission the engine, which is pretty easily. I change all the oils uh, in the fall. It's the last thing I do before I uh, get the boat hauled out. Uh, so now it's just a matter of literally starting up the engine and flush that RV antifreeze out through it and have it ready. There should be very little hard freezing uh, from this point forward through the season. And then finally, I have a lot of miscellaneous temperature sensors. I have a temperature sensor outdoor that has an internal readout. I have a temperature sensor in the refrigerator. Uh, again, it, it reads to the same uh, uh, readout uh, in, the, uh, in the cabin here. So I need to replace all those uh, small batteries and get that done. Other than that, it's whatever I see that comes up, little things, it's nothing really big. Uh, my plan is to sail. Uh, not today, it's about noontime. So I'm going to unload the car, stock up the food, and get everything set, do these chores. And then tomorrow, you know, as soon as the tide's in, I'll be heading out, getting, uh, getting some sailing time in. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, I'll walk you through a lot of these little things I'll be doing. You have a great day. This is one of those, uh, they call them eco heater fans, where you set it on top of your stove and the heat conducts up. And I think there's like a th one of these thermoelectric plates in here that converts the heat to electricity. A couple of modifications. I, I had to trim down these corners right here so it would fit on the stove. And when I put it on the stove, I'll I'll take a video of it. You'll see why, because there's like a, a railing on the stove that comes around. It was interfering with the corners, and I, I couldn't get it to sit flat. And earlier, here's the uh, railing that goes around, and I had to notch out these corners so they would fit under the railing and clear the stove pipe in the back. The hose will come in through the bottom, and I will probably run it down over along this wall here so it I can still put the pillow in and then I will run it probably like right through here there's some storage units along the back of the cushion so I can run it along the bottom here and be able to get it all the way to the back of the boat into the into the cockpit and into the locker put this, uh, which is labeled number two, I will put that in the refrigerator. This would be a good time, since I just loaded the refrigerator, to kind of go over some of the things I've done. This uh, white umbrella covering on the outside 
encapsulates about an inch and a half of styrofoam insulation. Here's the actual refrigerator. So inch and a half here, inch and a half on the other side, inch and a half in the front adds to uh, the efficiency of the fridge, which is really important when you're running on batteries alone. It, it really cuts down on the cycle time. But what you've noticed is in the back, this is where the condenser, the motor, uh, and it rejects heat, so you, you can't wrap insulation all the way around the back. I stopped right, right where these vents start. Here is the temperature control. And what I do is uh, I'll look at my temperature sensor that I just put inside and I'll adjust it accordingly till I get to about 35, 38 degrees. But it opens here and I have it under the table. It's the most convenient place to keep it out of the way. Uh, but as you can see, it's, a, it's enough room to reach my hand in there and get stuff out. Draining out the water tank. That's my water tank. I have an inspection port on the top, uh, which is kind of nice. I can get my hand in there and after I drain it, I can kind of clean out any residue, scum, whatever. Hey, while the tank is dripping, I'm going to get the engine going. My engine's seacock is down here, so I'm going to open, open that, and that's ready to go. Okay, what's going on? I'm going to start. Yeah, go check the battery. But, found out, if you use your key, it'll start. At least we hope it will. here is where the hot water heater is and you have to take this panel off to get to it actually to give you a reference I'm in the back of the uh, quarter berth and there's the there's the hot water heater. These are all the pipes and hoses. This is my drain line. It's tied to like a quarter inch petcock to drain. 
the heater out at the end of the season to get all the water out of it. Uh, what I I don't flush antifreeze through the heater anymore. What I've done is put on these series of valves, which I will try to point out. This is the water in, and what I do is I have a bypass. So this, right now, this is closed. The bypass is open. So it just goes through and then right out to the hot water. So what I'm gonna do now is I wanna flush any remaining water inside. So I gotta close the petcock. I wanna close the bypass and then open the inlet to the cold water. And I wanna open the outlet to the hot water. And I also have a vent way up here. I'll close that vent. Did I mention that uh, nothing's ever easy on a boat? So all I had to do is close this petcock and it's rusted. Okay, so I had to unscrew it, take it out, see if I can free it. If not, I'm going to see if I have a plug and just plug that drain so I can get the hot water system working. Well, I got this freed up. Let's see if I can put the whole thing back together again now. So what are the odds of getting this all back together again and not having any drips? That's always the challenge. I wonder how I did this the first time. Well, I put all this piping on in my basement. And then I just slid it in here and hooked up the hoses, so it was pretty straightforward. I'm looking for this water leak. Last year it was leaking and running along this fiberglass down into the engine pan here. So I figured it was one of these two hoses might have had a tear in it, or a pinhole, or even somewhere else I was, I was going to like wipe it down with a tissue after I had everything uh, pressurized and I've had it pressurized now for a while, but there is no water accumulating here So I'm not sure maybe I never really had a leak Maybe it was just rainwater that was trapped and uh, slowly dripping around there. What I need to do now is uh, This alternator belt is pretty loose. So I got to tighten that up. better. Not perfect. I'll make it perfectly after I run it for a while. <laughs> 